All right, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to create a uniform buffer object. And the purpose of that is to send camera data so that I can do perspective view sort of stuff. Um, just to start with, it's a good idea to give the project a run, the project we've got right now, just to check that it's working. And it is working. Okay, that's good. And we can just check the log and we're not getting any validation messages. Okay, good, good. Now, the reason I mentioned that is I made a few changes. Oh, no, don't save it. Well, nah. Okay, so I made a few changes. If we go to the um, pipeline function, I took that where are we? This create graphics pipeline. And I broke it down into a um, into its sub functions. So just, uh, yeah, so if you look in here, for instance, for the vertex input, there we are, instead of populating that that struct on the spot, I um, just called a function which essentially does the same thing. But it what it achieves is it gets this function from a close to 200 line function down to like a 100 line function, which I'm going to count as a win. And I also noticed I was getting weird messages, something like emulation found a weird value for uh, P next or something. And I looked this up online and if you're getting weird validation errors, something to do with emulation, then we simply go to the um, make instance function and just change it to a higher version of Vulkan. So I'm now running this on Vulkan 1.1 because I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a major update before I switch. I'm probably going to wait till Vulkan 2 in 40 years when that comes. Okay. So again, the purpose of this video, this session is to make uh, view and projection data and send that through so that we don't just have to hard code the positions and things. This is going to have a lot of steps. So we're going to try to step it out. I'm going to try to step it out as much as I can bit by bit. So we'll start one step at a time. The frame at the moment is holding all of the resources which will be used in one quote unquote draw call. Like when you say render a frame, you want to have all of these things. You want to have the um, image that you're rendering to, the command buffer to send commands and all of that. So for that reason, I'm going to associate the um, uniform buffer object that I'll send through. I'm going to associate that with this frame. So we'll go ahead and define this. Okay, so I'm going with this view projection option as well. And the view projection is going to hold basically the projection and the view stacked together into one transform. Um, the reason for that is it's as the models have more and more vertices, there's not really a, much of a point doing an extra matrix multiplication in the shader. We might as well pre multiply it on the CPU and then send that data through. It'll save time. Um, so we have that. And then this will be associated with the frame. So we can go ahead and declare that in the frame. So we'll say, okay, the frame will have a uniform buffer object instance called camera data. So the frame will know what to send. Then uh, we can go to the shaders and just modify the vertex shader so that it is also taking in that matrix that um, that struct. Okay, so here we have it. The the struct itself is is called a uniform buffer object. But the instance of that 
is going to be called camera data and that is set in at binding number zero. That will be very important. So now to use that, we take the camera data and we'll take the view projection and multiply that in. Okay, so we can now go ahead and recompile the, um, the shader. And just for, um, just for simplicity, I'm gonna recompile all of them. So we'll just grab these files, delete those. And as you can see, that has compiled with no errors. Awesome. So it's a great idea to just keep testing things as we go. If I go and run this program right now, it will probably not work because yeah, it's not working because there we go. Okay. It's really not working. <laughs> um, it's complaining that a descriptor set has not been bound and it might be giving some other errors. We can check up here. Ah, yeah, this is another thing. Okay. So see, yes, it's complaining that a descriptor set is not bound. I think it's really important to see the stages of errors as we go, because later on when we make our own thing, it might mess up and it's important to, to read these messages. So, um, what does it say here? Shader uses a descriptor set. Um, but that's not declared in the pipeline layout. So the issue is that back um, in a previous video when we were making the pipeline and we declared, um, let's go to the pipeline layout. Here we go, make pipeline. Oh, yeah, come on. Here we go, okay. So at this point, we um, declared that, where was it? Yeah. So we declared the, uh, the, push, um, the push constant range, but we didn't have a pipeline layout. Now we do. And that's, and that's what this is complaining about. It's saying, hey, when you set up the pipeline, you didn't send in any pipeline layouts, but clearly I can see that this shader has a binding, so it needs a descriptor set. So it needs a descriptor set layout, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the descriptor set layout, and then I'm going to put it in to this make pipeline layout. So again, one step at a time, we'll go to the header and down below we have all of these things. I'm just going to say, okay, make some descriptor objects. Um, one of which is a descriptor set layout. And then the question is, where should that be created? Well, it has to be created before the pipeline because it will be used in the pipeline. So we'll make a function for that. And I guess before we make this, we'll need to make a function to make a descriptor set layout. So I'll just go to the Vulkan init namespace and create a new file. I'll go ahead and call this descriptors.h. So I'm gonna future-proof myself a little bit here. I'm going to declare a structure that I pass in when I make a descriptor set layout, and that structure will describe a whole set of possible bindings. It will include the binding indices, the, the types of bindings that we're doing, and this will we'll start fleshing this out in future sessions. So yeah, this is sort of a high, an abstract description of a descriptor.
if that makes sense. We need to know which binding number that that descriptor is, um, what type of descriptor it is. We need to know how many descriptors we are declaring because it's possible to declare um, heaps. So, well, so for instance, if I have 10 uniform buffers that I'm declaring, instead of calling this 10 times, I can just say, hey, these start at uh, binding number zero and there's 10 of them, declare them all at once. And of course, we also need to declare which shader stage, which stage of the shader this is associated with, which is data that we should be able to, the system should already know. However, I'll be explicit about it. So what I want to do, what I want to do is make that descriptor set layout. So I'll make a function there. Now we're going to need two things, I guess. Of course, we're going to need the logical device that the system is running on. And I'm also going to need to take in that uh, layout data struct. Okay, so here I've not been too creative with my variable name, so I'll try to describe things as I'm going. We've got this set of bindings, and these are sort of vague descriptions of things. I'm going to put those together and make a descriptor set layout binding for each of these descriptions and sort of stick them together. It's a little bit of overkill right now because we're only binding one, but this will be useful in the future. So what I want to do is I want to collect all of these into this vector of are these Falcon, these ones, there's a mouthful, these Vulcan descriptor set layout bindings. And we know how many of these we're going to have. We'll have uh, bindings, the count field. The count field of this struct indicates how many bindings will be, will be bound. So now we can go ahead and loop through. So I'll just bring this in from the documentation. We want to populate, basically set up a new layout binding, populate it, and then stick it onto the vector. So we have all of these fields that we can set. Uh, the the binding index, in this case, binding number zero, the binding type, sorry, descriptor type. In this case, it is a uniform buffer. The descriptor count, just one. The stage it's used in, and this immutable samplers is only used with, with images and things. So let's go ahead with this. Okay, cool. So fingers crossed that will set up a whole list of these descriptions. All right, so what we can then do is create the descriptor set layout. And again, I'll just bring this over. So we want to make a, um, yeah, a layout create info. And as we can see, it's pretty pretty straightforward, I would say. All we really need is the number of bindings and the pointer to the bindings. So we can go ahead and use the vector above. Okay, so there we have it. Just reading the stuff from above. 
So now we can go ahead and create the descriptor set layout. So as with a lot of things, this will be a try catch block. And yeah, let's go for it. So there we have it. We have, yeah, created the descriptor set layout. Okay, cool. So we can go back to the engine and set that up. So we'll make the descriptor set layout and then the pipeline. So just bring this down. And of course, we're going to have to include that um, descriptors file. So we'll go include vk init descriptors. All right. Okay, so let's go through this. We're going to bind one um, thing and that thing is going to be at binding zero and it is going to be a Vulcan descriptor type of uh, uniform buffer and we're just binding one uniform buffer so we'll go bindings one and it is going to be used in the vertex stage. Okay, so we can go ahead and create that. Okay, so with that descriptor set now created, we can go back to the pipeline function and or the pipeline header and just right up the top we can set it so that we are also what is it uh, taking in a descriptor set layout all right cool so then we can go down to the it's pretty close to the bottom There we go, all right, down here, and we'll also take a So I'll say, all right, we've got one of those. And we'll, we'll pass that in. All right, cool. So then we'll go back to the like I said, there's a lot of back and forth, but here it goes. Okay, back to the create graphics pipeline, to the stage where we are creating the, the layout. Here we go. And we'll also pass in the thing. All right. Cool. All right, all right, all right. Um, so where are we? So then in the engine, when we go to create the pipeline, we also set. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's give that a go, see if we're still getting that error. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, make pipeline layout does not take, oh yeah, of course, of course. So, Part of the rearranging these functions involved declaring prototypes up the top. So I'll just go and update that prototype. So down the bottom, 
here we go. This is the signature we want to go with. Just go back up the top. Here we go. This is the one. So I'll just set that there. Okay. Now let's give it a go. There we go. Okay. So we've got an orange screen, which is good. Um, it's, it's, it, it's hating it. It's hating it right now, but that's an improvement. If we quickly, quickly run this again and then close. Come on. We can see that we are not getting that same error. Hopefully. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So this, this validation error is saying, hey, we've got the layout, that's fine. We've set that all up, but you're drawing and you're not binding anything to this, this binding index zero. So that's fine. We'll be looking at that uh, later in the video. So again, step by step, this next step is pretty straightforward. We've created a descriptor set layout. We will need to destroy it when the program closes. So we'll just go down to the, yeah, the cleanup section and maybe, it doesn't matter. We'll just, because the swap chain is going to use descriptors, we'll destroy the set. It, it really doesn't matter. So we'll just go device, destroy, descriptor set layout, no worries. Okay, now I'm going to modify the frame a little bit. We'll just pop in here. Now see here we have this camera data. And by the way, I'm going to organize this. So we've got, uh, first of all, some resources associated with the swap chain and uh, frame buffer and stuff like that. Then we have a command buffer. And then we have some resources associated with um, synchronization. And then here I'm going to make some resources. So these are all of the resources which will be used in drawing. So I'm going to have two more bits here. I'm going to have a, a buffer. So we have this struct that we can write to that's nice and straightforward. And then we will serialize the data in this struct. We'll write it to this uniform buffer. And um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use mapped, um, yeah, mapped IO, memory mapped IO. So we're going to grab a location in RAM, write to that, and then an interrupt or something will occur and that will be transferred over to the data card, graphics card, I mean. Um, and I'm going to keep this mapped the whole time because it, it yeah, it does take something to set up a mapping. So we won't be doing that every frame. We'll just create the mapping and then it will be persistent. So I have camera, data, right, location. So that is the memory location that if we write to that, it will be written to the, the buffer on the graphics card. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a function which will um, create these resources. Okay, so we'll go through the process of creating a buffer. It's similar to what we did with the vertex buffers. So we'll have this uh, buffer input chunk and we'll just set some fields. So we'll say, okay, uh, the logical device, the physical device, memory properties, So as always, um, these two flags essentially specify that we want something that we can write to from the program, from CPU directly. Okay. 
Okay, so there we have it. We have created the camera buffer. The last thing we need to do in this function is grab the RAM location that we would need to write to in order to flush out to that buffer. Okay, so as we can see here, we need to specify the uh, device memory that we're writing to. That is, we go to the camera data buff. Uh, I said camera data buffer, the buffer memory object. Okay, the size, well, that'll be the same size that we're allocated above. And then the, ah, I've got these out of order. So it's the memory offset and then size. Okay, so offset is zero. And then the flags, as we can see here, these have default values, same for the dispatch loader. So we can just leave those out. There we have it, we've set that. So what we'll need to do is go back to the engine and back in the engine, I'm, let's have a look here. So we've got this finalized setup, make frame buffers, and then this make frame synchronization objects. And then if we look into what that's doing, that is, we'll get back to that in a second. Here we go. That is looping through all of the frames and working with them. So let's broaden this. Instead of just making synchronization objects, let's make everything associated with a frame. So, we'll go, or maybe not everything, we'll keep the command buffers separate. I'm just gonna call this make frame resources. I'll go ahead and pop back and declare that. Okay, so yep, renaming it everywhere it occurs, including the swap chain recreation. And then I'll just check this again. So we should also free everything. So we've mapped that memory. Let's go device, unmap the memory. And that is the, go to the frame. There we have it. All right. Yeah. So we'll basically get rid of all the, all the resources associated to the, to the frame. Okay, cool. So then we can go back and actually create those. Okay, so here we are We're looping through and let's double check that. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. All right, so <clears throat> we'll take that frame and tell it to make the UBO resources based on our logical device and our physical device. All right, so that's all well and good. So the next thing I wanna do is I have, where was I? If we go to this frame, we have this camera data and uh, the camera data buffer. I'm going to write a function that updates the camera data and then writes all of that to the buffer. So we'll pop back to the engine and uh, back here. So we have prepare scene. Let's also, um, yeah, let's also prepare the frame. And we'll need to take in the um, image index that we're preparing. Yeah. So what this will do is we'll take a given index, like say, say we're updating frame number two, 
it will write to that um, uniform buffer object and then it will write the uniform buffer object to the buffer. So we'll just go over to the source and frame resources, it's fine. Up here, yeah, right here. Okay, so for now I'm just hard coding this data. Later on, as the program gets more complicated, I'll create an actual camera, uh, camera class and just read the data from there. But um, previously we had a whole bunch of uh, squares and triangles and stars and things which were just set out at z equals zero in a grid. So what I'll do is I'll set my height, my z height to, to one. So I'll be looking down. And I'll just look down at the center of that and it makes sense. So then I need to create the projection matrix. So just a classic perspective projection um, with a near distance of 0 0.1, a far distance of 10. Now, in order to account for um, the difference between uh, the OpenGL coordinate system and the Vulkan coordinate system, we simply need to take that projection matrix, take the second row and column, and uh, flip it around, so multiply it by negative one. And there we have it, we can use that. So what we then do is we take the, the swap chain frame that we want to access, get their camera data view, and set that. We'll set the projection and the view projection. So we're doing that multiplication ahead of time. Then what we do is we perform a memory copy to get that into the, um, what am I thinking? To get that into the camera right location. Okay, so there we have it. We copy to this um, right location, and this is the data that we send. Okay, cool. So then let's leave that. Let's leave that for now. We'll get to the rest of that later. So currently, currently, uh, well, we need to call this, of course. So we'll go down to render. Maybe, yeah, just before we just before we deal with uh, command buffer stuff. Ah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go. Um, okay, so every frame we go to render, we get a new image index, prepare it. So if we were to run this and look at the, the internal data, this would now be updating in every frame. Okay, so. Then the next question is, fair enough, how do we, we've got a descriptor, why can I not speak? We've got a descriptor set layout in our engine. Now, how do we get a descriptor set? The first step of getting a descriptor set is it turns out these are allocated from a descriptor pool. So, well, we need one, we'll, we'll, have one descriptor pool which allocates a whole bunch of these so we'll go to the engine header and right down here this is where we'll have our descriptor pool 
Okay, so if we go back to the make frame resources, a frame is going to have a descriptor set. So a descriptor pool must be allocated before, uh, must be created before those are allocated. Let's go, so, so just bear this in mind, this is where the pool creation is going to be. Let's go back and create a descriptor pool. So this is in descriptors.h. All right, so um, see that I'm using, I'm reusing the, the same struct from before. And the reason for that is I want to reuse this bit. I want to, because when I allocate a descriptor pool, it needs to know what sort of um, descriptors are going to be allocated from it and how many of those and so on. So for that reason, I'm using the same struct and I haven't come up with a nice way of creating it once in the engine and then sending it to both. Um, I have to think about that, but for now, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go with this. So in order to create a descriptor pool, we'll need to know all of the various aspects and dimensions which are going to be allocated from it. So for instance, let's say we'll go back to the example of uniform buffers where we have 10 of them. So we want to say, okay, pool, um, you should be able to allocate 10 uniform buffers. And then in ad addition to that, we have three um, images. So we say, hey, okay, uh, pool, you need to also allocate three image descriptors and so on. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the bindings and write a set of uh, pool sizes. Okay, cool. So this has set up a vector describing all of the, the sorts of allocations that need to be made. So then we need to create the pool. So we'll go ahead and create this um, Okay, so just bring this over again. I mean, this part is pretty straightforward, but it's good to see how the structure works. So really important, I guess. Yeah, we've got some create flags, that's fine. Max sets is a number of descriptor sets, which is gonna be allocated. It's gonna be three. If we've got three frames in our swap chain, we're going to have three descriptor sets allocated from the pool. Uh, the pool size stuff is declared up above, so yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, cool. So there we have it. We've got our, uh, yeah, our pool size has been set up. Pool create info, um, so we can go ahead and create it in the try accept block. Okay, cool. So 
like I said, I'm going to come up with a more elegant solution later on, but for now I'm going to copy paste the code that I had in the descriptor set layout. So if I go back to up the top, there we go. But I guess we don't need all of this, right? We just need count and types. So just won't populate the rest. There we go. So we're saying, hey, we're working with this device. Um, use that to create the descriptor pool. Um, create three, a pool big enough to allocate three frames. And um, these are the types. So we can quickly run this. Oh, yeah. Another thing um, before I get to that, we will need to, because this is, because these frame resources are being created. What am I saying? Because this descriptor pool is being created with the frame resources, which is also bound to the swap chain destruction and recreation. We will need to destroy the descriptor pool in this cleanup swap chain. Okay, but um, with the descriptor pool, if it is destroyed, the descriptor sets do not need to be destroyed. They are managed by it, so no worries there. Now, let's just give this a shot, play this, and check that we're not getting any major errors, apart from the errors we expect to get. Oh, okay. We are getting some errors. Hmm. Okay. Probably need to let's go back to the frame and we probably need memory in order to run that function. Okay, good. There we have it. Yeah. No errors as far as I can see. Let's Yeah, it's fine. Just the same thing as before. So we're getting there. What we need is we have resources, but in order to send them to the graphics card, we need to describe those resources. So we need some res uh, resource descriptors. Now, the first one that I'll add is a um, descriptor set. Okay. For now, that's fine. So we'll need to allocate a descriptor set and we could make another function here. Um, that would be fine, but I'm also, maybe instead of that, I'll go and create that in the descriptors file up above. So descriptor sets are not really created in the sense that they need to be, you know, created and, and freed and, and stuff with the create info. Instead, they are allocated from the already created descriptor pool. And um, there's not a lot, there's not a lot that we need to describe here. We just say, okay, which pool are we allocating from? How many descriptor sets are we allocating? and which layout do they need to conform to. So um, we can set all of those fields. And then just as before, we will use the try catch block to allocate that. And then of course, because this is meant for creating a whole bunch of them, it will return a vector of um, 
descriptor sets. So just grab the first thing. We're only allocating one. Okay, cool. So we can then use that function to set the frame. So we can close that down, go to the engine source file where we're making the frame resources. So again, we've created the descriptor pool. We've made everything. Now we can just go frame descriptor set. So we're going to allocate based on our device. Um, The descriptor set layer okay cool okay so now we've got the descriptor set so think about it we've got the frame the frame has this struct which is being serialized down into this buffer and it has this descriptor set now because vulcan is vulcan we can't just put it straight in we need another level of indirection so we need to describe <clears throat> describe the um the resource. So we'll create another data structure. We'll have a Vulcan descriptor, what are we? Descriptor buffer info, that's it. So this is the bit that I was gonna fill in later. So <clears throat> we've created everything. What I wanna do is wrap that um, wrap that uniform buffer up in a descriptor. So I'll just bring this in. This is the descriptor buffer info. All we really need is for it to point to a buffer and give it an offset and range. This will be very straightforward. So we'll say, um, there we have it. So that is now described. Now, we then need to have a function which will take this descriptor and write it into the descriptor set. So I'm going to create that here as well. Make another function. Okay, so the way we do this is we populate a struct which um, describes a writing operation. If we wanted to write multiple descriptors to the one set, we would have an array or a vector of these structs. Um, so as you can see, yeah, we go through here, we have all this stuff, we can ignore that. Uh, we have the destination set that we're writing to, the binding, the array element, which isn't relevant here. Um, so just set that to zero. The number of descriptors that we're writing in this operation, and the type of descriptor, as well as we can send in arrays of um, arrays of descriptors as defined up above. So let's get into this. Okay, so then we can call this function to take in this um, write info and update the descriptor sets. Okay, cool. So this null pointer here is if we hover over, we have the descriptor writes. Okay, no problem, that's there. And then we have the um, descriptor copies. So it's possible to write to multiple descriptor sets in one go, I guess, um, but I'm not going to do that. So I'll just work with that. Right. So that being the, that being done, we can then go back to the engine where we, not that, where we prepare the frame and then right down the bottom, we can say, okay, 
Um, let's go to... Yep, so grab that frame that we've been preparing and then write its descriptor set. Okay, so we're so close, we're almost done. All we need to do now is go back to the, uh, where is it? Yeah, the record draw commands, I guess. Yeah, and we need to bind the descriptor set. So we'll just go down. Now, because the camera data is being sent in once, this doesn't need to change. For all the different drawing operations we do, we're always using the same projection matrices. So we'll just do this once at the start. So we'll go command buffer, bind descriptor sets. So then we have the bind point. So we go Vulcan. Yep, the graphics. Um, and then the next one is the pipeline layout. So I'll say, yep, oh, come on. There we go. We're binding it to that pipeline layout. Then we have um, the first set. We're going to start at set zero. And then the set of descriptor sets. So we'll need to go um, swap chain frames image index get that descriptor set and pass in. Oh, does that work? Oh, let's pass in a pointer to it. Wait, uh, let me check that again. Ah, uh, no, of course, that's just a, a reference to a thing, so that's fine. Um, and then finally, we have these dynamic offsets, which we're not gonna have any dynamic offsets. We're not using dynamic storage buffers or uh, dynamic uniform buffers or anything like that. So there we go. Fingers crossed, uh, that should be fine. Okay, so let's save that, give that a go, see what's happening. Okay, so not the best result. As we can see here, um, it, oh, we can't see anything even though in our code we were specifying explicitly that we were looking at the point where the, the things were. Um, but we've got a few good things. First of all, our frame rate is back to normal and we are not getting any error messages. It's a good idea just to scroll through all of this and say, yep, are there any validation messages? Nope, it's fine, that's, that's okay. So. And now we need to debug this a little bit. And as I'm sure you understand, debugging on a GPU is very hard. So we'll just do a few simple things. If we go back to prepare frame, I guess, I'm going to take this line here. This is the only line which is actually being read by the shader. So if we change this, it should be the most visible. So we can go back here and say, okay, well, what happens if we just ignore this? So we send in the identity matrix. That's equivalent to doing no transformation at all. Give that a go. And it is working. So we are passing that data in properly. So then this comes down to a whole bunch of staying up till 3 a.m. doing random things. But it turns out that the the way I declared my my objects, the vertex order was incorrect. So all we need to do is if we look at these objects from below, but then we set it so that below is the up vector, it's a bit of a bit of a hack, but that should now be working. There we go. Okay. So we have got some perspective going on here. And um, yeah, I mean, we could fiddle around with this, make it look nicer, but I'm happy with this for now. So there we have it. That is how we set up descriptor sets for the frames and send in data. In the future, we will be looking at 
Two more things, we'll be looking at sending in textures, that's pretty important, and we'll also be looking at sending in um, a storage buffer so that for these positions, instead of doing little Vulcan calls on the fly all the time, we can just send in all of the positions in one go and that will make, that, that'll get us the frame rate back, essentially. Alrighty, anyway. But that'll be it for now. Thanks a lot, hope you had fun, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.